This is Mr. Vargas, and this is part three of my Flying Aces tutorial. So mm -hmm. let me show you what the game looked like at the end of part two. In the end of part two, you had an airplane that moves left and right. You have enemies being spawned continuously, and you have bullets that are um, that fly that you can shoot, and they destroy the enemy. And if an enemy hits you, you go to game over. So what we're gonna add today is we're gonna add some audio. You will find that adding the audio really makes this game come alive. So you're gonna have audio right there when you shoot, and you're also gonna have some audio when you hit the airplanes. And I'm also gonna add some uh, background music as well. So we're gonna add some sounds, and this is, that's something we've done a few times before, so that should be pretty easy. And the one new thing I wanted to add was I wanted to add something to the background. So all of our backgrounds up to this point have been static. So what we're gonna do is, you know, this is supposed to be us flying over water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an island underneath us. And the island, when it, so the island's gonna move to give you the illusion that you're flying over it. And once the island goes out of view, a new island, wink, wink, will appear at the top. It's not really a new island. The, um, the island that you, that goes off the screen, we just make it reappear at the top. So let's get to work. And first we'll start with the sounds. So, um, let's go, um, let's add the music. I guess that's the easiest one to add. So inside of the player, let's go behavior and we'll just do once. So this is code that will run one time at the beginning of the program. So once we're going to play a sound. And the sound that's going to play is, so we're going to go to music, we're going to go to 8-bit, and let's go with battle, I'm going to go with battle 10, I already heard it, it's pretty good, right? It's taking a little bit to load up, sometimes it does that, but we'll go with battle 10, and we should hear it when I preview, in fact, we can preview it right now. Oh, let's press enter. It, it almost doesn't have enough time to play. Let me try. Let me just hit play over here so we can hear the music. So I can move out of the way. And there you hear it. All right. So that's it for music. So let me go uh, load back my main level. Let's go back in here. Behaviors. Again, once connected to sound effect make sure you should probably set it to loop. That's how you add music. All right. So now let's, um, add the bullet firing sound so we can, we're staying in here and this is where we fire bullets. When you press space bar, it emits bullet objects. So what we're going to do is when you press space bar, we're going to do something else as well. We're going to play that shooting sound. So we added a sound effect block again from components. And let's, for the sound, let's go to effects. Let's see, maybe 8-bit. Um, um, let's see, which of these will work good for that? For a bullet, maybe damage? I don't like those. Let's see. It shouldn't take too long here, but let's see, maybe... I don't like those either. Um, let me go back and you know what? I'll, I'll just pick you. You can take your time looking through all of these. Let's see, maybe damage. Um, yeah, let's try damage. You know what? I'll, I'll just go with this. You take your time and find something that sounds like a bullet firing, but we'll, we'll go with this damage sound just for the sake of going through this quickly. Let's test this out real quick. So let's see, okay, let's test it out over here. It seems to be working better when you test it over here. There we go. All right, so edit game. So that's our bullet sound. And again, find a good sound. that I don't think that was the best sound. Um, but we'll go with that for now. And now we're going to add the last sound is when we crash into the airplane. We want the airplane to, um, to play a sound 
when the when the bullet crashes into the airplane. So let's go inside of the airplane. So this is our enemy airplane. And inside of our enemy airplane, right now we have when there is a collision with a bullet, destroy yourself. Well, what we're going to do is we'll have it play a sound. So when you collide with the with the bullet, not only should it destroy itself, it should play a sound. So let's go in here. Let's do true sound effects, maybe explosion. That's fine. Press OK. Let's um, test this. It seems to be testing better in this view for some reason. It might be my internet. It takes like a second for the sound to kind of... So that's it for the sounds. Um, yeah, so those are just some basic sounds. Makes the game feel like an actual game. Now we want to give us the feeling of actually flying over water. So we're going to add an island. So just click anywhere on the screen. We're going to do create. We're going to name it island. And um, for the sprite, you can draw a sprite if you want. You can delete this and draw an island. You can increase the size if you want to make one that's a little bit larger by clicking resize and then moving these little tabs. That lets you make a bigger sprite that's like two grids by two grids if you wanted to instead of one by one. But I'm actually not going to do that. And I'm actually going to use an island that I already have. And for if you're watching this and you're my student, I'm going to put this in Google Classroom. Um, so let's upload that little island picture. And where is it? It's on my desktop island right here so I, I for my students i will provide this on um on google classroom if you're just someone on youtube who found this video um you can message me i'll send it to you or you can find another image of an island so um that's our island picture let's press ok and now let's go to physics we're gonna make this island movable but we do not want it to be solid and we're not going to use gravity to move it. We're actually going to just code the movement. So press OK. And now, actually, let's click on behaviors to do the coding. So this is going to be one big, long chain of code. We're going to use an always block because we're going to want this island to always be moving. We're going to, um, and so like I said, we always want it to be moving. So we're going to change its position by a number. So we're going to add a number block. This number block is going to be three. And as I mentioned, we're going to be moving its position. So we go to properties at a position block. So out of here, we go to the in. And then out of the three, we go to the plus Y. So it's increasing the Y coordinate. Then what we're going to do is we're going to be testing this Y position. Because if I just ran the code now, the island would just fly off the screen and then never reappear. What we want to do is we want to test it for when it goes out of the screen. We want to make it jump back up to the top. So we're going to use a filter for that. So under logic and math, there is a filter block. And inside the filter block, we're going to change it to greater than 340. And let me explain why I'm picking 340. So the bottom of the screen is 320, but I don't want it to just disappear right when it like hits this little bottom spot. I want it to go off the screen first and then disappear so that it doesn't look too jarring if it, you just see the island disappear right when it gets near the edge of the screen. So the screen is 320. So I gave myself 20 more pixels of movement. So we'll press OK. So this is a filter. It's going to take in a value and check to see if it's greater than 340. The value we're checking is the Y coordinate. So it goes into the in. So the Y of position, we check to see if it's greater than 340. If it is, it's time to jump to the top. So we need a position block. We're going to need something else before the position block. But let me just throw the position block in there. All right, so we want to set its X and Y position. The Y position, we want it to be at the top. So you could set it to zero. But again, just to improve smoothness, I'm going to set it to negative to a negative number. So it, so it actually jumps above the screen and then um, smoothly scrolls into view. So um, let's go to logic and math and we're going to set that to negative 
20. I think that should work well. We'll see how it looks. Negative 20. So when this filter is passed, that means that the value going into it is greater than 340. We're going to send negative 20 to the Y. And now what are we going to do with X? If you left X, if you left it like this, it actually, it'll default to zero and the island will keep reappearing over here. If you set um, X to the current value of X, then actually, no, you know what would happen if you, if you didn't set anything there? It would end up just staying in the same spot. The island would come off and then reappear above, but it'll still be in the same horizontal position. What we want it to do is appear in, you know, various places so that it just doesn't look like you're like you can tell it's repeating. Like sometimes you see that with old cartoons. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a random block to pick a random X position. And we're going to do somewhere from 10 to negative 310. Right. Where do I get these values? Well, the screen is zero to 320. So I'm giving myself a little bit of buffer so it doesn't appear right at the edge of the window. So we'll press OK. And so when this filter is passed, it generates a new random number and it sets that to the X position. So this should work. Let's test it out. I'm going to try not to get hit. And you see, if you can see in the background, it's working. Let me go to the other view. Let's hit play. And you can see, look at the island. It goes off and it reappears at the top. That time it appeared in the same spot. But look, now it moved over a little bit. And you know what um, I think actually even helps it a little bit? Let's load up our first level again. So I want you to do this. Click on it. Let's hit clone. Right? Let's add another one. Right? And let's add one like maybe right here. So now let's hit play and let's see how that looks. So, and you know, you can, and then you can make more islands actually. So, um, I have, I actually made a version that has three different islands. I'm only going to require you to just do one island, but, um, let me see. I think I still have that version over here. So I, um, I was testing this out and I, um, I added two more islands and I also added a start screen, but I'm not requiring you to add that. And if you can see the islands we have a little more variety but i didn't i didn't think it was necessary for this tutorial i just wanted to introduce one basic new thing so i'm only making you i'm only having you do that one island just may add a, a couple of them and that's it that's it for flying aces part three thank you for watching